We had a uh, we had the one that Rick from uh, Taps and Caps, the uh, Rick. Oh <laughs> come on! Oh <laughs> not on air, please. <laughs> hey. The show got so big already. You're forgetting everybody. No, I'm just bad with you names. Change, Victor. Oh you change. God. Welcome back to another week of Dallas Great Talk, guys. We're in a nice, cool room today. Ooh, chilly, feeling, chilly. Feeling nice. We start nipping, don't blame us. <laughs> you like it. <laughs> I'm your host, Victor Santana. To the left of me, I got the man, Drew, the beer guru. What it do, baby Bringing boo? Bring back, that old name back. That's right. You know, not the Wrangler anymore. I'm up, I'm up in my you beer be game. Both. You could be a Wrangler and a guru, right? Can you? Can you be a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you could. Can you? Yeah. Easily, easily. I don't see why not, right? Fuck it. Okay. And then the man, the myth, the legend... We got Ziggy, number one comedian in Dallas. What up, guys? Good to be back. <laughs> I, like that, I like that sound effect. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so, I usually ask how everybody's doing. Fuck that. I just found out my people, these is a Meryl from Viceland, are fucking leaving the Viceland to go to Showtime. The New Yorkers, huh? It's one of my favorite shows that I don't watch because I don't watch, I don't have TV, but I watch them on YouTube. And oh, yeah. I can't find any talk show from Showtime on YouTube. Yeah, yet. Maybe they're gonna change the game. So I only found out about them through you. Yeah, I watched them all the time. And at first, when I first saw their stuff, I was like, ah, it's all right. And then I started watching them more. Hilarious, dude, they crack me up. But yeah, so I don't know how this is gonna go because it's it's what, uh, premium channel? Like it's that. Showtime, yeah, Showtime's yeah, a premium so, channel. Yeah, so I don't know, their content. They don't show on YouTube. Isn't gonna be on YouTube. It's gonna cut out a big portion of their audience, I feel like. Yeah, and their views. I, I mean, they might get, I, I don't know their numbers. I'm pretty sure Showtime's not gonna pick them up without having any uh, information about them. So I'm pretty sure they do great on uh, late night TV. Yeah. But it's just like, I watched, I've always found out about them through YouTube and the internet. Like that's how I found out I'm on Complex. Mm -hmm. I find, I, they, they were on MTV2, but I didn't watch MTV2, but their clips came on YouTube with them. You know, they all their little their podcast comes on YouTube. So, man, I don't know. I so okay. So you're mad that they're no no longer gonna be on Viceland, right? Yeah. I'm kind of on the flip side. I'm like, man, do y'all man make that money? So, would you rather be the number one person? At, like, I don't want to say lesser location. Viceland is, I was on a come up. Yeah. You know, a, would you rather be number one on a growing network or number ten on an established network? You know, you got to stay hungry. So you start at 10 and then you make your way to number one at Showtime. Or make that, <laughs> make, own Viceland. Why not own Viceland? Make it for what it is and have everybody come down. True, true. I mean, it's a bittersweet thing. The, the, we got people over here saying, like, the money, yeah, the money, I understand the cash, right? But why, mm -hmm. from my thing is, I think, like, try to think long term yeah. game. Like, if I'm the reason why everybody come into Viceland, I could renegotiate the contract and then I could be, I could either have stake in the company or renegotiate my contract because now I bring I have way more value but are you going to get that Showtime money though we don't know what they're getting from Showtime yeah true know. true true but here's my thing like it's a bittersweet thing you know you at some level it sucks because as a consumer of that program you're mm -hmm. like hey it sucks because it may, may not be as accessible mm -hmm. unless you already have Showtime and you're like cool I'm going to just switch over to Showtime but on the go like I, the re I'm, I mainly watch it through YouTube as well and if it's not gonna be on there, then I probably won't even watch it. Then I so probably won't watch it either. Alienate some of them, but at the same time, you're kind of happy for them because they're getting they're getting paid I'm and good for they, them. I'm not gonna say not yeah. take that check. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just I would rather them do it move differently. I'd rather be the reason why Network's successful and then renegotiate my contract that way versus being on an established network and then trying to reestablish my value do a network. So yeah. they're getting paid mm -hmm. for their value or perceived value for Showtime. Mm -hmm. They haven't made a Showtime thing, and that's one thing. I mean, fine. Try to make your own thing there at Showtime. There's no knock to that. Do they get to take the bear with them? I hope so. I don't know. I just with, the, with another, the Timberlands on. <laughs> another thing that pissed me off, or not pissed off, but I was disappointed in um, yesterday was when you, because you're the one who broke the news to me. Yep. Um, what I was disappointed yesterday is like they already just do a Monday to Thursday show. Why not do a Friday Saturday show with Showtime? Why have why oh. you put all your eggs in one basket? Why can't you do both? Because Showtime wants that content, so they're gonna be like, oh. But they do have that content. They're gonna have their weekend content, right? Yeah, but you know, you know. We could do a once a week show for Showtime, you right? Know. Why not do like, why don't you be like Bill Maher who does a once a week show on Fridays? That's like they're saying- They're already off on Friday. I think if I was Showtime 
and you, you pitch that idea to me, I, to me, it'd be the same thing as like, okay, you know, you could have, you, you know, somebody's gonna, you're gonna share your girl Monday through Thursday, it's and you same. get her, you get her Friday and Saturday. It's not the same. It's not the same. And you know, because I'm you equating your your <laughs> no. value as as one entity. You have multiple values. You have value. You have family value. You have your time with yeah. your family is its own value. Your time yeah. at work is its own value there too. Yeah. Your time here is your own value. Your yeah. it's not just being shared as yeah. No, I know. I'm just trying to make that. <laughs> yeah. And then you have like, I'm just saying my girl is worth that Showtime money. That's all I'm trying to say. I mean, Amy is. Amy, Amy is yep. worth that time. All that money. Yeah, I mean, we got to pitch that to Showtime. All I'm saying, Viceland, look at us. We're available. Yep. Yeah. We can, we can take that late night show we'll, real quick. We'll be putting all those VHS, VHSs in the mail, and it's we'll be sending them to over you. to you guys. <laughs> hey. We got you. Yeah. We're just as popular as Deezus and Meryl was when they got picked up by <laughs> Viceland. Victor's a uh, New York uh, native. So, you know, we can, we can bring that uh, New York flair, you know, back to it. So, just saying, Viceland. Holla at us. Holla. I, I've decided that now every time Victor is successful, I'm just going to tell him, yes, queen, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, bitch. <laughs> Slay. <laughs> Get him. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. No, yeah, so big up to them. I just want like, I just like Charlemagne, like the big thing I wanted to end this was Charlemagne and God has his morning radio show, right? Yep. There's Monday to Friday. He interviews people there, mm -hmm. but he gets multiple producer roles and multiple content from mm -hmm. other things he does outside of his main job. Why not do the same thing with them? You know, so I, I didn't read into the whole Charlemagne the God stuff. So he's, you know, he's got um, the morning show, mm -hmm. but is he, does he get to still be on the morning show? Even yeah, though he's, he's going to HBO? On, he's going to be on the morning show. Uh, what is he doing for HBO? Interviewing people. Okay. He's gonna be interviewing people. Yeah. Him one on one, like he did with the Kanye interview. Ah, uh, okay. It's gonna be him one on one versus a guest, similar to um, Real Sports with uh, Brian Gumble, similar to yeah. uh, um, Dave, uh, Larry, not Larry Davis. What's that old guy that's on Netflix? He was my special next guest, whatever. Oh, David Letterman. David Letterman. Yeah, yeah. You know, similar to that, like one on one interview style content. Hmm. Interesting. You know, uh, It'd be interesting to see how it goes. Maybe they're going to push and get it on YouTube as well. That'd be dope. Maybe. Showtime, not Showtime. HBO does now are pushing their content to be on HBO. Bill Maher has their stuff on uh, YouTube. Uh, last week, tonight, on Sundays, that comes out with uh, Stephen Ol John Oliver. It's not Stephen Oliver. It comes out on YouTube. Uh -huh. uh, a bunch of their content are being... <laughs> I'm really yeah. bad with names. No. I'm sorry, Ziggy. Uh, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm also, just trying to figure, like, what Stephen you were going to replace... <laughs> John Oliver with because like <laughs> Stephen Root doesn't work. Steve, Stephen Steve uh, Irwin Tyler doesn't work. Alligator Hunter Steve Irwin Crocodile is Hunter. very much Steve dead. O. Steve O. Steve Urkel Steve. is not a thing. Steve it's a Austin. fictional character. Stone Cold. Stone Cold Steve Austin. I would watch a news show hosted by Stone Cold Steve Austin. Dude, it'd be the best. You watch his podcast. Listen to his podcast when he had it up. We need Steve Austin on the show. He lives out here. He, he loves beer. With he our beer very show. much yeah, loves he would. beer. He, uh, he had a podcast for a while that was really, really popular. Yeah. And uh, it was the greatest thing on, uh, on the planet Earth. Really? He's the most ridiculous person in the world because he's super redneck. Oh, yeah. And fucking huggable at the same time. I don't know if that's a thing, being redneck and huggable. I think it is. Is it? Well, it's I'll like you hug him and normal see what redneck versus deliverance redneck. <laughs> True. True. Yeah. True. Big difference. Hmm. Well, big ups to Jesus and Mero and big Charlemagne the God. Yeah, 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 up big, in their game, going I mean, premium. Up. So we've got uh, a couple of beers. Ziggy, we said we're going to start out with this uh, one from the, the cherry one from the brewery. Um, you want to give <laughs> the, one we can, the one we can't name? So I told him uh, Ziggy's going to read the name off because I have no. I can see yeah, so, the first part. Griffin. Yeah, so while we're pouring this, I will uh, pop the uh, uh, info page up here and, and try and, and read this off. Now, this is a, a retired beer by the brewery, and I believe that it is pronounced Griffon Bruloy. Uh, and uh, it says here, we debuted Griffon Bruloy late in 2012 at a few of our events, and it was quite a hit. This dark, sour ale was aged in oak barrels on cherries, giving it an incredible fl fruit flavor balanced by the roasted malt and lactic tartness. We must admit, this bottle-conditioned beer didn't turn out quite as carbonated as we were hoping for, but 
It is still an incredible beer, 100% worthy of our high standards to be sold, served, shared, and enjoyed. Now, this Griffon Bruloy is best paired with cherry pie, seared duck breast, and kale salad. Seared From the sounds... brewery, it's the Griffon Bruloy. That's a seared that... duck breast. I'm like, I'm kind of hungry now. That sounds like a uh, meal that I would only have if I was doing like a pairing with it or something like that. Uh, so. Actually, Pete, uh, for last Thanksgiving, made duck, and it was amazing. So, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. Pete about duck. is a really good. I like duck a lot. We had that duck turkey over there. Shout out to uh, uh, what's that? Brain dead. Oh yeah, over Brain Dead Brewing. Uh, Victor took us on a bacon journey, so they had a, yeah. a bacon flight. Yeah, and, it was uh, really good. Yeah, she was dope. Yeah. I almost had a heart attack. All the sodium I had. Oh yeah. But yeah. how do they make how do they make a pig big enough to build a plane? <laughs> it's easy. It's true. It's easy. I'll show you. I'll take you to Brain Dead. This is the pigs have wings. <laughs> Give them Red Bull. Pigs can fly. All right. Well, uh, let's give this a shot. Cheers. Cheers. Salud. Cheers. Cheers. Salud. Oh, you can taste that tartness Woo. goes right through there. Mm. That's good. Oh, it was rough. That's good. It so, doesn't taste bad, but you know I don't like sour stuff, so like yeah. my mouth is uh, salivating, and I can't, our first sip was rough. So it's got like kind of that. You, it smells like a sour. Like kind of like a little funkiness to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. The color's really cool. It's it looks tastes great. It looks like apple cider. <laughs> Not a fan. <laughs> it's okay. it's good, but it's bad at the same time. You should have poured more in Ziggy's glass. <laughs> you gave yourself that. <laughs> topped it off. <laughs> I got I gotta tell you, it it might smell a little bit like the Kool Aid Man's gym bag, but oh, it shit. does taste very good. This is something that I really like, and it reminds me. Uh, a little bit of the the cup of ramen uh, mm. beer, yeah. Fair uh, enough. Where it it has this saltiness that I really enjoy, but here it's it's much more of a pronounced cherry flavor, mm -hmm. and I kind of almost wonder where they're getting this sour into the beer that it's not overpowering that cherry flavor because it's very pronounced and i think that pairs really well yeah i think it's like the wild yeast that they use for it the i think sours. cherry like see, a little bit of cherry always seeps through i don't know if you ever cooked with cherry before or cherry sauce a little bit always goes a long way with that stuff man it's just that i think it tastes great it's just the sour kills me like every time i drink it yeah. like it's hard for me to drink it when you get through the, the initial sour like kind of tartness i, t I taste the cherries uh, and it, and How do you get through it? I can't. <laughs> just keep trying. You 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 gotta. What was it? The, the the bearded lady rule. You gotta have at least three sips. <laughs> yeah. To, to see if you like it or not. But no. You, once you get through the, the the bitterness or the the tartness, I taste the cherry and it, and it, it sort of like, there's this weird little in between right in the middle that it, you almost taste like the the, the barrel aged. I, yeah, I have. A, I definitely taste the cherries, but I'm having a hard time getting through the sour portion of it, so I can't get the nuance flavor because I'm over. It. My brain's already shut off with the sour stuff. The sour is very upfront. Yeah, it. it's not kind of on the back end. It is very much in the front end, and then those oh, flavors yeah. come in after the sour. Oh yeah, yeah. it's just. Uh, I don't know, man. It's just. I like the. I, it tastes. The cherry taste is is amazing. I mm -hmm. like that portion of it. I wish I could get to the nuance, what you were referring to as the barrel part. It's just that cherry. It's rough. I'm gonna have to chug it. Oh shit! So, uh, how would you rate this beer? Man, my definitely for me would be uh, on the house. It'd be definitely on the house for me because it's just sour stuff is not. It's not very appealing. I don't like sour candy. I don't like sour stuff. And the, the but the beer tastes good. It's not like I'm disappointed by the taste of it. It's delicious. It's just I can't handle the sourness. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I think for me. I know it doesn't seem straight up like this, but th it's so tart that I could pair this with like a dessert. So I'm gonna call it a dessert beer. I was gonna say the same thing because <laughs> I really like best this, friends? but it's did. not. It's not the. It's not in the phenomenal category. Yeah, it's. I'm and, and I'm. I'm kind of on the fence sometimes about sours. Like I enjoy them to an extent. I wouldn't be able to drink more than one because they just, depending on how sour they are, they just. I think that's don't the. Do I think that's the distinction with it, which turns it into more of a dessert beer. Is mm -hmm. with with phenomenal to me. It's something that you can just pop mm -hmm. all night. And with this one, it, it is more like of kind of a situational type of, of definitely brew. situational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys, I, I'm glad you guys like it. I like the taste of it. It's just 
for people who who are watching this or, or listening to this on SoundCloud, just go to a uh, freaking YouTube, Instagram, somewhere. You can probably see a clip of me. My face doesn't say I enjoy it, but I like the taste. But my face says disgusting. Yeah, it's got that real like I was always... just tart. I, Tartness. I always describe like the sour the beers jaw? that are real as like you really feel it like in your jaw. For me, I'm like I feel it kind of like <laughs> so it makes you kind of pucker up. But well, it's, I, it's good. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I I enjoy it. Like I. What do you think, Ziggy? It's it's a it's a complex beer. I think that's the mm. thing. Is it's one of the more complex Definitely. beers we've had on here because it has such a it's a very a distinct flavor profile. But the way that the flavors are playing out, I can, I can definitely see that if you are not a fan of sours in general, you would not be a, a fan of, of this beer. Mm -hmm. And even though it is, in my opinion, a very good beer, I can also see that you can't drink just this in a night. And so that's kind of where that category of dessert beer mm -hmm. definitely comes and in. What's the ABV on this? It is uh, six point one according to the brewery website. So it's not too bad, but it's a lot for uh, for a sour. You know, mm -hmm. typically like four. Am I mistaken on that? Because the no, I think sour beers are usually like, like a little bit like they're not too high in ABV. Like Oklahoma beers, right? Wait, which Oklahoma beer? Like the the, the, the alcohol volume. Like the gas station beers. Oh, got you. Like the uh, uh, okay, yeah. Um, the three two beers. The three two beers, yeah. But it's a. Pick up to them. Like this is really good. Mm -hmm. It's good. I just can't. Ha if you don't like, if you hate sour candy, sour or anything, it's not for you. If you're on a fence, try it. We had it. Uh, uh, we had the one that Rick from uh, Taps and Caps. The uh... Rick. Oh <laughs> come on! Oh <laughs> not on air, please. <laughs> hey. The show got so big already. You're forgetting everybody. No, I'm just bad with you names. Changed, Victor, oh you changed. You changed. No. I'm already on my side. I'm like, fuck this. I'm above no, all remember this. how you brought like one of his favorite beer was yeah, that yeah. one from the brewery, and it was a I forget the name of it, but it was that black that Saturday one or whatever. Yeah, Black Monday, Black Saturday, whatever. Black Tuesday, <laughs> Black Tuesday sounds about right. It's a it's a week is a week beer, and it's associated to like the uh, economic fail, some shit like that. Yeah, but anyways, that one was was real good, real strong. Uh, that one was super strong. It was eighteen percent, nineteen percent, yeah, crazy was, shit like that. Yeah, it was pretty high. Uh, but we also had another one on the on the show a while back. It was a uh, Belgian wheat beer, and we actually both really liked it a lot. And uh, I forget the name of it, but uh, I'm rubbing off. That's why I'm rubbing off. You, you're actually really good with names. I'm just like I'm rubbing off with you so bad that you're forgetting names and shit too. Yep. yep. It's, it, it's not even. I don't mean to be offensive, but my initial reaction is like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? And then you're like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Like, I think about it. Like, oh, yeah, I do know what you're talking about. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you see people in the streets. They're like, hey, what's up, man? Like, do I know you? Who are you? Yeah, I would say, oh, I, I, work with, I work with a whole new crew of people. So I don't really talk much to them. But they they ask questions and they try to get to know me. And uh, a few of them just came back from New York. <clears throat> and they're like, you know, people aren't as rude as they thought. But there are some different things of being rude. I was like, ah, I mean, that's perceived rudeness, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, because we don't say hi to every motherfucker doesn't mean we're being rude. We just got shit to do with different, different... You got priorities. You know, different things. It's just different. Time management. Yeah, we just see things differently, you know? I don't care how your day's doing. Just ask what you want. What mm -hmm. you want. Don't ask me. Don't beat around the bush. Be yeah. direct. Yeah. So, as, as someone who's grown up in Texas, I find that very refreshing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, how's your day going? Who gives a fuck how my day is going? You don't know me. And I don't know you. If I break down and start saying, like, I'm having such a shitty day, 99% of people don't care. You you find that rare man or woman, because I've ran across them, that really do care mm -hmm. and go the extra mile, that's that's a rarity. But the norm, it's just a perceived niceness. They want to deal with you. Like, the perceivedness. Yeah. It's like, a, just be cool. Yeah. It's like a cultural ex expectation. In, you may not even care. Nah, cut that it's, shit off. It's just like, yeah, it's just more formality. Like, hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Hey, so How's your day going? Mm -hmm. It's going good. How's yours going? It's going well. And that's it. They don't want you to say it's going well and move the fuck on. They don't want you to be like, my day is like, actually, my wife is leaving me. She's cheating on me. She's taking the house. They mm -hmm. don't want to fucking know that. Nobody wants to know that. Mm -hmm. They just like, whoa, too much, bro. Or yeah. they just look at you with that face like, mm, fuck. <laughs> I fucked up with this question. Yeah. Save it for your therapist, uh, Maori. But it's just the thing; it's just perceived nice. So the lady was like, "What? It, how? How you talk to people?" And I was like, "Well, I've been here for ten years. I acclimated. Like when people ask me how I'm doing, I'm like, I'm good, bro. 
or I'm good, everything's good. I just keep it to the simple, like it's good. It's or I refer to the weather like the stupid fucking yuppies from everywhere else around the world. They just refer to the weather all the time. Like, how's that Texas weather, man? It's wild. They're like they like it's hot outside. I was like, it's was cold. I'm like it's cold. Snowed. They're like it's so tornado. humid outside. It's like so dry. I'm always uh, being a dickhead with them. You know me. They're like, yo, it's so cold outside. It's like hot as fuck. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> Uh, on that, I'm a big uh, proponent of never asking people about the weather. But last night on a delivery, <laughs> I, it was like the one time. A little poured down a rain. I was like, oh, man. No. So last, so yesterday in uh, the area where I deliver, it wasn't super hot, but it was really, really humid. Mm -hmm. And so when it gets really, really humid, I you know have glasses. So one of the problems that I have Fogs is up. I will blast my AC in my car. And when I get out of my car to walk up to the house to deliver, like immediately my glasses fog all the way over. And so last night it's like nine o'clock. And I'm and I'm walking up to the to this house and it's you know at this point it's night and I can't see like at all <laughs> and I don't I don't realize that this guy is waiting on his porch so I don't realize I don't realize this but I like almost trip on one of his stepping stones because I can't see where I'm going and then I get up to the porch and then the the motion light comes on and then he's sitting there and he goes man you almost you you almost took a tumble and i was like yeah i'm real i'm you know i'm really sorry about that but here's your pizza he goes don't worry about it it's humid i have glasses too yeah so nice. i understand i'm like oh well great You're i like uh, obviously homie, i can't homie. see that you have glasses now but thank you for <laughs> empathizing with me in this moment what if he was like man you almost ruined my pizza i've had that before my stepfather is a it's a typical new yorker and he's the type of person that doesn't give a fuck. Like, it's always like, yo, why the fuck you on my grass? And he just stare at you like, uh, uh, and my, and because you don't expect that response. And I, just, I feel bad for these kids because most of the time they're like 16, 17 year old, maybe 18 year old kids. They're like, uh, uh, like delivering sorry. pizza. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, here's a pizza. He's like, don't walk on my grass again. <laughs> See that's that's weird because I I make it a point to not walk on people's grass, but I have more I've had more interactions with people telling me I'm an idiot because I didn't walk on their lawn. Really? Like See, no, I that's cool. Go ahead and walk. And I think that what it is is there's more grass here than in New York. So uh, like in New York, you're trying to protect your grass. Fair from, enough. I think from my, the yo, I got land now. I think my first step is just a dick, and he <laughs> likes me to dig. <laughs> Ziggy's trying to give you an out. <laughs> no, I just because I like that about him. He's an asshole. He's an asshole with me too. Because when I park my car, he looks where I park my car and how close to his grass he's like. We would make sure you stay off my grass. <laughs> the man loves his grass. There's nothing the wrong with that. He told me, he told me, cuts the grass. Like, you see what I did to the lawn? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I see, I see it. <laughs> does he do the uh, like? Does he do the different cuts? patterns? Yeah. Every time he changes the pattern, like, look at the grass. You see something different? Yeah. I was like, nah. I fuck with him. Like, nah, I don't see anything. <laughs> it's like, you don't see the lines? Look at I. I went. You know how hard it is? I go this direction against the grain of the grass. <laughs> So you can see it. That's awesome. No, I think I think it's unfair that you are excoriating your stepfather for his lifelong dream of being a groundskeeper for Yankee Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> and he all he's doing is he is putting in the work. He is his practicing dream. every day to accomplish his goal. And you were just <laughs> shitting all over him he's on like, yo, your yo, yo. podcast. You can see Jeter like catching like a, a ground ball. He right hates here. Jeter. He hates Jeter. Oh, okay, we'll see. Uh, he's rightly. He's he's, a, he's uh, Jackson, um, the Mr. Uh, October. Uh, okay. The original Mr. October. Reggie. Oh, thank you. I forgot his first name. I just know Mr. October Jackson. Um, the original. That's so weird. I know. So bad. So bad. Anyway, I'm bad with names, but <laughs> not Mr. Mr. September Jackson. Yeah. Mr. October Jackson. October. Yes, sir. Remember that. October's very own. Not Mr. Uh, November Jeter. Who? Yeah, making it through this beer, it's getting a little like I'm, the sour is starting to get to me a little bit. I'm pretty sure rough. all of the enamel on my teeth is gone. I had none after my first sip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to get fake teeth. <laughs> get a Dallas Beer Talk grill. You know, all the way through, get the logo <laughs> on my teeth. You know, <laughs> Gold, straight up yellow, yellow diamonds. Bro, I watched that video. Uh, I was editing a video course for uh, the uh, the show Aaron tonight. And uh, we said a thousand followers on my butt chug. We're not that far <laughs> off from a thousand followers. I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot about that. So let us reiterate on this show. If no. we can get a thousand followers. Thousand and one. Thousand and one. Yeah, we got to break a thousand. 
We'll yeah. get Victor the beer chug a sour beer. Maybe, oh it, maybe it'll taste better that way. And you won't care. <laughs> She's going to burn my ass. <laughs> She's going to do like Thai food. And we'll do that on, on Instagram Live. <laughs> no, we got to edit it. <laughs> so I'm over here eyeing up your new creation you have here. Uh, oh, uh, the growler. Yeah. I keep eyeing it. It's just shining back at me, looking all glorious so over here. So I don't know if you checked it out yet. Uh, so we got a new growler. It was, uh, thanks, you know, shout out sponsor Amazon. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of our leading sponsors. Yeah, you know, they, they pay love for everything. Them. We love Amazon. Free shipping, too. Can you believe it? Yeah, uh, pro with Prime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, <I'm> just... <laughs> this episode brought to you by Shout Prime. out to Amazon. Check us out. Um, so it's uh, one of the, the, the truck deals. You know, this is... Did you like, say drug deal? Yeah, drug deals. <laughs> they go to the hood. <laughs> so what you need. I got so, Quick side note, because this is, we're going to talk about the growler, but the truck usually stays in one spot for an hour. Mm -hmm. But this truck was only in one spot for 30 minutes because it was in the hood. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it was like in downtown Dallas in the hood, hood. Oh, shit. And they, were, they didn't really set up like they normally do with like the, the music and then the bubbles and stuff. They were just there. Like it looked like a drug deal. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, you only had a 30 minute window. You got to get the in and out real <laughs> quick. <laughs> That's like a little shutter thing. They're like, hey, what do you need? You got you. You got you. I, I, I came for the growler. Let me see your phone. Let me see your phone. <laughs> so, All right, you're good. Here you go. Here you go. Get out of here. Get out of here. So that's drug deal. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is a growler from uh, uh, Growl Works. Growler it's Works. A, yep. It's a pretty badass growler. Ziggy, can you pull it up online so people can see a little bit more? It's a CO2 growler. So what we do, we fill it as a 64 ounce, and it's pressurized with the CO2. So what we do, we fill it up, and they have different levels of pressurization for it for recommended beer style styles. And it keeps the beer longer, tastes better, and it's pretty badass on the go. And and for a hundred bucks, uh, it was basically still because they typically sell this for two hundred, two fifty. And I fucking love it. So we're gonna use it today after well, after the show. We're gonna go to Crafting Growls and use it. But it's a badass thing, man. So mm -hmm. uh, it's for us for the show. It's a little investment for us. So whenever we get growler filled beers, we're gonna put it in here and. Uh, I think the first time I saw that uh, that particular growler was at Craft and Growler. Yeah, they have that the one with their logo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, no, there's a different, like, a guy came to get some beer for that anniversary party we went to for him, and he showed oh, up. He, he showed word, up at the word. bar with it, and I'm like, dude, that's a dope growler. Like, where'd you get it from? And he's like, yeah, from Amazon. But yeah, yeah it's but they, cool. They have their own one that's a little different. I think what I like about it is the... Oh, look at that. Look at the one. See, they have the different sizes and the things like that. It's pretty legit. Yep. They're putting out all the hits. I like the the fact that it has a little um, handle, like a little tap handle, basically. So yeah. when you want to pour a beer, it's real easy just to pour it out. You have to work, like tip the whole growler over to, to pour a beer. Yeah, and uh, what I was talking about Drew this when we were, when I was getting it. What I what I was thinking about is because when I and I don't know if it's true or not, but when I get a growler filled beer, once I crack it open, I'm like, oh, I gotta drink it all now because it might go flat. Yeah, because well, the oxygen in it will. Uh, start changing the flavor of it. It might, it might not taste as good the next mm -hmm. two, three days down the line. You mm -hmm. know, with this, I don't have to worry about that because once it's in here, it's in here. Mm -hmm. It's pressurized and I can just pour what I want and it stores longer. Mm -hmm. So it's super exciting. So I, we could get something over the weekend and know by the show it's still good. Yep. By showtime, it's still good for us. Nice. Yeah, that should be cool. I'm, I'm excited to try it out. Like this so. would have been good when we went out to uh, Taps and Caps and it had... Uh, yeah. They're that juicy beer. Yep. We could have saved it for the show. Damn. You know? So it's, it's super exciting. We're doing things. We're doing some big things here. We got some uh, some camera works. We're doing some big things, some upgrades here with yep. uh, on-air media. We're going to try to start doing some uh, on-location shots yep, and yep. see if we can show you guys some of the behind-the-scenes workings of some of the cool breweries that we've had on the show. Definitely. And then we're so. going to do uh, some canning shots up here at the studio. The studio here is... Uh, what on air media is doing right now in Dallas is pretty legit. Like the studio office space is badass. You know, if you're in a DMW area and you think about uh, doing a podcast, you know, definitely check out on on air media. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely a spot you want to be when it comes to shooting a podcast. Mm -hmm. Just for the 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 engineers we have here, are legit. Just the the on site locations, good place to show for guests and stuff like that. And if you're gonna do like interviews and stuff like this, this is a spot to be, man. This is a spot to be. Yep. So definitely check that out, man. But yeah, we got a lot of things working on with uh, with everybody, man. We're trying to upgrade. We're trying to be like Jesus and Mero. We're trying to get to that uh, Viceland level. Then we're trying to get to that HBO level. No, I'm, I'm just trying to get to that Viceland level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm kind of tempted to send all our YouTube clips <laughs> to. Uh, uh, what can you Viceland? get for us? Like, we're ready. We're ready is that, is uh, Maddie Matheson, is he on? He's on, uh, he's on Viceland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I love Maddie Matheson, man. Mm -hmm. He's the guy's the best, man. 
He's he's hilarious. He's a fuck, do you know who Maddie Matheson is, is Ziggy? Uh, I he's know chef. who uh, Matthias Nilsson is. C- close. Kind close. of. But no. Some other guy. Mm, different. But it's a lot of good people on Viceland. Deezus and Mara was definitely... Maddie Matheson and Deezus and Mara was probably the only people I really pay out pay attention to mm-hmm. on Viceland. Uh, Maddie Matheson is just... Because I like his cooking style. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> he seems like an everyday guy that like... Has a culinary background, but he cooks like just some meals that and you want to just. Up. He's like, "Well, yeah. we do a pitch of this, and well, we're gonna fix this. We'll roll with this. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it." It's not oh like all like glamoury and you know, so good stuff. He's the fucking best. We got one more beer on the chopping block uh, today. Another one actually from the beer raffle as well. So uh, yeah, big up to again uh, beer squad. Beer squad. Doo-doo-doo. They will be on the show real. <laughs> They are—they're gonna be on the show soon, soon. So we're working out with uh, Beer Squad. Definitely, we're gonna work with uh, uh, Myra. Yep, the beer, beer, uh, the beer girl, gal, the brew gal, the brew gal. I think that's her name. Her and her husband, they yeah. make them, they make pretty legit beer too, by the way. So they're going to come on the show. Yep. We got, we got a, a good list of people coming on. Judy, which is a, I forgot, I never looked up that word of what she does. So the sommelier is Sommelier what, is, is what it is? Called. Sommelier. Mm-hmm. She's a certified sommelier. Yeah, so a she does wine the, uh, the wines. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, she was interested in doing the Cicerone program, the which Cicerone. is for beers. Okay, yeah. And so we talked about that with her. And so we're hoping to get her on, maybe do like a wine episode so she can come show us how to drink a drink wine properly the different mm-hmm. ways the different different uh how to styles it. and stuff so now if if yeah. you thought that you were picky with your uh beer styles yeah the wine is gonna be ridiculous but she also i, I was if she really likes us because she wants to do that that beer stuff with us this yeah she was talking about us like all getting together and doing the cicerone program that'd be something cool to do with her the study materials i think are pretty expensive or something mm-hmm. or other and the so. beers you have to get is pretty expensive yeah it adds up and she said like, it's, it's more economical to split it with, with yeah. somebody mm-hmm. and i'm like fair enough hashtag squad up squad yeah but anyway let's drink this beer we got another beer uh this one is the aslan uh what do you call this the rich mahogany barley wine rich so. mahogany I have many leather-bound books in my apartment. Smells of rich mahogany. Uh, I don't even actually know what that smells like, honestly. Uh, it smells like Ron Burgundy's apartment. It smells like wood. <laughs> Ron Burgundy and wood. I, I mean, I could imagine that. Let me get Ziggy's. I'm gonna, I'm gonna equalize this. So uh, this is a barley wine from the Aslan Beer Company, and it says here that there are no IBUs to it, but it is 12% ABV. The Rich Mahogany is an English barley wine with notes of chocolate, fig, plum, coffee, and caramel. Rich Mahogany is hopped with Chinook, Centennial, Columbus, and Amarillo hops, which lends to notes of pine, grapefruit, and pineapple. That's Rich Mahogany from the Aslan Beer Company. So it's interesting, man. Uh, what is it, 12% ABUs? Uh, no ABV. IBUs, 12% ABV. So, barley wines, if you ever, some, somebody offers you a barley wine, you better be expecting to get a high alcohol beer. Like, the style is just heavy. It's always high. High alcohol. Um, like 40%. I'm joking. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. That's that snake bite or snake venom or whatever. <laughs> snake bite. It's probably yeah. snake so, bite yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, the barley ones I've had in the past, I've had some other ones. Uh, I actually had that new Martin House one, Christmas in July, which I'm going to bring in the show probably, I don't know. Next time we have well, no guests. Yeah, yeah, when it's just us. Or we could do that with the, the brew girl or the beater lady, whichever one comes first. Yeah, yeah, so you can kind of, you can kind of, uh, uh, what do they call it, cellar those barley wines. So mm. they kind of mellow out over time, I think. But yeah, so they got like usually the ones I've had, they have like a pretty strong alcohol taste to them, okay. that little bite. So, okay. uh, but yeah, we'll we'll see, we'll see Shout how this out. one goes. Cheers, cheers, Ziggy. Smoky a little bit. Yeah, that's smooth. That's Does it good. Even have alcohol in it? Don't you don't taste, taste that. I don't taste it at all. Yeah, that's good. I kind of get it a little bit on the back end. Oh, it's twelve percent. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's up there. It's twelve percent. It's like You're a bottle right. of wine. <laughs> For real. The wine is wine twelve percent. The wine was like twenty percent. No, like wine's like it depends on the style and make. Like a twelve to fourteen percent, I want to say. Hmm. We'll ask our we'll ask the sommelier Judy whenever she comes on. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, you know who else we got? We got we got Todd from uh, Oak Cliff Brewing. Yep. Yeah, can't forget about Todd. Yeah, he's gonna come through. Uh, I spoke with uh, Adrian from Pegasus City Brewery. Shout out to uh, Pegasus Brewery, man. Yep. So their brewery, her and her husband. Hopefully, it can come you said on. Her husband's the brewmaster. The brewmaster. She's nice. the creative creative director, I think. So she does like all like the kind of the graphic design aspects of their bottles and everything. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a weird video. So people, I believe that in in the video, but people watching, I'm like reaching over your face. I'm like, yeah, put the camera in the right spot so it doesn't cover your name. I wasn't talking or anything. <laughs> Asking a question, he's like, no, shush, shush. <laughs> but anyways, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, what do you guys think of the rich mahogany? I don't know. Uh, I, I got to drink it a few more times. Really, the first wasn't bad. It was actually, I just got caught with the smoky flavor, which I, I enjoyed a little bit, but I haven't really delved deep. Yet. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed is usually when they say that there's notes of uh, chocolate and caramel that's gonna be the main flavor mm -hmm. but with this one that is much more on the back end it's much more subtle it's there but it's only brief and i do feel like there's this this smokiness to it not a tartness yeah but more of kind of like a roast kind of smoky note yeah like a sharp roast to it that is the initial flavor and then the the uh chocolate and the caramel and a little bit of the coffee they come in on the back end yeah, I agree. I, I get the caramel for sure, the smokiness. Uh, what's honestly what surprised me the most is there's not a big alcohol bite to it. Like all the ones that I, I told you I've had in the past usually have a pretty, pretty strong. They let you know that they're whatever ABV they are. I think so. uh, I think every brewer we had on here says if you could make a high ABV beer without a bite to it, you know that you know that's a sign of a good brewer. Yeah. So shout yeah. out to whoever the brew people who made this, you know. Yeah, beer squad, good pick, good pick. Oh man, we got so lucky with that. We got how many? We got like seven beers, six beers from them. Yeah, we got yeah, we got a good amount. Yeah, it was yo big up to them, man. I can't wait to have them on the show. They're fucking hilarious. Yeah, they're cool people. You know, follow them, follow them on uh, Instagram. We, when, when they come on, we won't touch on it right now, but whenever he come, uh, whoever we get to come on from from the beer squad, hopefully both of them. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna discuss the merits of different types of barbecue because that's what we <laughs> talked about up there we, we at Tax and Cast. About that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I mean, for some reason, people want to argue with me. I don't know. Uh, is it, uh, I think it's the other way around. I mean, I don't argue. I just tell you facts. <laughs> <laughs> Those were alternative facts you were telling me the other day. <laughs> oh, look at them. Oh, big up to the Beer Squad. This is their uh, Instagram page. Please mm -hmm. follow them. Support them. Uh, they travel all across the United States picking up beer. They're Dallas uh, locally, but they travel around a lot and do a lot of beer meetups. So mm -hmm. big up to them. Uh, if you could buy their merch, buy their merch whenever you see them. The shirts are soft. Oh, fucking. The logo's cool. Badass shirts. Yep, yep. So... Yeah, cool people. But it's the brothers who run it. It's, um, I don't even know what the brothers. I said brothers, but there's two friends. <laughs> two guys who run it. <laughs> Why you got to say it like that, man? <laughs> they're happy and they're singing and they're... Uh, never mind. You know, <laughs> and they're colored. Give me a high, high five. five. <laughs> uh, that was a good show. It was a great show. Yeah. Well, uh, good beer, by the way. Back to the beer. Big ass segue. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is a badass beer. And uh, you know what? What are you rating this? I'm rating it as a, as a phenomenal beer, man. It's something I want to drink more often. I'm just in, you you touched on something last week about the the lavender beer mm -hmm. that you were like it's just something there that makes me want to drink more. I don't know. There's a lot it's of interesting, yeah, it's interesting flavors to it, and it this keeps is bringing you back for another taste and try to taste it and try to figure out what if, mm -hmm. what am I drinking here? And it's a good all around note. So mm -hmm. I give this phenomenal because I'm intrigued about. I get what you guys are saying. I, I understand it. I, I agree with it. But there's something there, too, that's putting it together. And I'm trying to break that down. But it's a great beer all the way around. Man. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I'm digging this a lot. I'm leaning towards phenomenal. But I almost want to say, and this, I don't want to just go for the same one two in a row, but I, I think this is a dessert beer. This is something I want to kick back on the I couch. See that. Yeah, yeah, yeah sip on this and just you know cut it up with the friends but it's real sippable so like having dinner with a bunch of friends yeah you, know, yeah. you and amy going out to drink and you still got to sit yep. there talking instead of giving coffee you get this yep and i got a, i got a cigar in my hand you know yeah. making moves oh, you know oh yeah 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 so it's dope it's yeah, dope what about uh, you, Ziggy? yeah uh guys i think this is the rare episode where the beers that we have had on are uh very similar categories of beer mm -hmm. but vastly different. diametrically 
opposite. Yes, yeah. because I agree that this is a dessert beer. Mm. I think that it is a really, really good beer, but I think it also has the same ca the same problems that I had with the first beer of keeping it from the phenomenal category is I don't know if I could drink this all night. Mm -hmm. And so what what I would actually recommend is that for the Griffin uh, Rebelo or Rebeloi, that tartness would pair well with a very, very sweet dessert. Whereas I feel that this beer, it's it's a it's just a little bit chocolatey. It's going to pair well with more of like a lemon tart dessert. Ooh. So it's, there, we tart. have two even different types of dessert beer pairings today, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Wait, uh, so you don't have cigars for dinner? Is that you tell me? I mean, for dessert? Um, no. A different kind of cigarette. He has a different kind of cigarette for dessert. That's right. Yeah, no, this is a really good beer. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really impressed, and you know, uh, I, I got the, I got into the beer scene here in Texas thanks to you and thanks to doing this show. Um, but it's more along that they be trying these different regional beers with, uh, thanks to the beer squad, and they even said it like, Texas is behind the curve on beer, and you could taste it with these regional beers from the East Coast and West Coast. Putting out those bangers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, putting these hitters out there. And mm -hmm. you could taste it. And the collab they did with uh, the Juice Beer, with... Uh, yeah, the Squadzilla. The, the with, Squadzilla was with... With, with, uh, with Brutal Beer Brutal Works. Works was in the Juice Beer. They did something else. I forgot what style of beer it was, but that was also good and different. Mm -hmm. But the Juice Beer, they worked with um, Taps and Caps. Are you talking about the Elixirs? The Elixirs. Yeah, I don't know if they were collab. I, don't think I thought like, they were collab with that. No, I think it's their own creation. A Taps and Caps' own creation. They tapped, but I think it was uh, them. I don't and, know. Because they collabed with another brewery and did it, and I thought, I thought the beer squad was know. involved with it. But well, they did well, Tell you what, we'll, we'll bookmark that. We'll talk about it whenever they come on. Facts. Somewhere in between the arguing about barbecue. Facts. Yeah, Facts. For sure. But yeah, I get what you're saying. It's true. It's kind of cool and refreshing to try some. Uh, different regional beer that we don't get here in, in our market yeah because uh, you can see the kind of the creative things people are doing or the different flavors and the way that they brew beer so it's interesting we got to take like a beer road trip i think one of these days trust me once uh once amazon really picks us up and you know trust in our ability to do this stuff we're going to take this fucking international yep we're gonna have to record that at dj loud studio and then make it his own audio <laughs> just me doing that thing we need, yeah. a little, we need like a little sound board here where we can just push the buttons for <laughs> Let's <laughs> just try to do sounds. <laughs> yep, that'd yes, be dope. that's the next step, DJ Loud. Look out for that. We're gonna be calling you real soon. Real soon. It's the uh, what is this? Uh, what is the uh, name of his studio again? Come on, man, you've been there. It's like Grand Studios. And this is uh, Dallas DFW Grand, Grand Studios. Bam. Mm -hmm. DFW Grand Studios. Shout out to DJ Loud. Check him out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> DFW area too. Uh, really, really affordable studio time, you know, uh, excellent, again, excellent engineers over there. You know, we know them personally. So big up to them, man. Yeah. We're going to make our own soundboard. Yep. Is that possible, Z? We could get our own soundboard and fuck with you guys? Uh, uh, <laughs> we'll talk about it off air. <laughs> <laughs> with Jeff Bezos' money, anything's possible. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> we could do anything. I just think about 10% of his money and then we could do anything. Dude, I could, that would we be a ridiculous like, amount. We could do anything. With 10% of his money, you could own the Ukraine. I was like, you could buy a whole country. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for sure. I was just saying, we could do anything with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so on that note, we end on a happy note. We got a little weird in the middle about guys' uh, energies and sexuality in the middle, but it's an overall great episode, man. It was a lot of fun. The beers were absolutely phenomenal. I'm glad that I was able to explore that with you. Well, thank yeah. you, sir. We have another clip here we're going to watch here in a little bit after the show because that was the most risky part. Uh, it's the one with uh, uh, Jim Norton. So anybody who knows Jim Norton, Jim Norton is out there. Mm -hmm. You know, he's out there sexually. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's out there and open. So big ups to him. But anyway, it's been a great episode. I love you guys. Uh, Check out uh, last week's episode. is going to be with Jacob. Support Jacob, too. Follow him on Instagram. Yep. Great home brewer. Great friend of ours. Blow him up. Blow him so, up. You know, uh, we wish, uh, we're going to keep following him. Wish him nothing but the best. Follow us anywhere on social media. iTunes are up. SoundCloud is fully updated. We're, we're pushing Rocking it. and rolling, baby. Ready Woo! to go. And then you're going to catch us in the streets recording, too, soon. So, mm -hmm. big ups to that. I love you guys. Anything you want to end with? Uh, thanks again to the Dallas Beer Squad for letting us win that raffle. Uh, and... Beers are tasty. You guys are cool. We'll see y'all next week. Facts. Peace.